join so that we can go live. Uh, before uh, we uh, we move further, I have to share a good news. Ravi, who is the uh, owner of this startup YoYo, has become a father of a young girl two days back. So uh, we, uh, today I am taking the responsibility of moderating with Gurupreet Singh. Hello, so we'll wait for another uh, 30 seconds before we go live. Before uh, a number of people joins. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is a, a very important topic, is a part of my book, which I'm going to, uh, I'm writing is a book churn or burn before i go further uh, startup yoyo is in the uh, this thing for helping uh, young entrepreneurs to start their own uh, ventures and they may have many, many dilemmas so which um, uh, ravi uh, startup yoyo can help you with various uh, consultant various advices and things like that and uh, we are uh, this is a 17th uh, 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 lecture in the series of churn and burn. I, I, my name is Nilesh Desai, and I am um, the director of SME Analytics Private Limited, which is in the business of analyzing your balance sheet and uh, profit and loss to give you 52 various kind of ratio. This will be done free of cost by us, so that uh, you improve your operational efficiency. So now let me introduce uh, today's session uh, speaker, a young boy from Delhi and in Bombay also. His name is uh, Gurupreet Singh uh, and he is a BA economics, MA economics, uh, postgraduate uh, in diploma, uh, digital marketing and communication from Mika. Mika is a very famous uh, institute for all this. He has started, the best part of it is he has started his uh, uh, startup at when he was 19. So uh, in, in the name of Credenza Consultant, and he is working in this field for last four years for marketing strategies, business development strategies, and communication strategies. So I will request Gurupreet to now go, but uh, the uh, first 20-30 minutes he will give and then we'll have 20-30 minutes question answer. And I, I want you to take uh, uh, full advantage of this because the value of brand and how to nurture he is going to talk about. So handing over to Guru Preet. Thank you, sir. That was very kind of you to introduce me uh, very amazingly. Thank you so much. Uh, hello everyone very good afternoon uh, it is an immense pleasure i'm joining mr desai for this uh, webinar and i'm grateful for him uh, for giving me this opportunity and for sharing my ideas and whatever i've learned so far although we all have a long way to go so uh, yes uh, coming to the today's uh, topic of discussion it, it it revolves around creating and nurturing a brand uh, before we dive into it you already know uh, a bit about uh, myself, Mr. Mr. Desai, very well uh, started. Uh, so I would say, uh, why is creating a brand and nurturing a brand is important? Because uh, I would say that because uh, before we dive into the technical aspects, it is very important that uh, whenever we are, we are running a startup or whenever we are running a brand, it, uh, we have to make sure that we deliver beyond commitment. And uh, whenever there are problems in a business, be it uh, on the finances side or creative side or marketing side, nothing can be a quick fix. Uh, it has to be, uh, it has to go through a process backed by a solid course of action. So that is important. And then whenever we are, uh, uh, whenever we are focusing on marketing and communication, it it is not just a lip service. It is more than that. It, it takes. Uh, weeks and months to come up with ad campaigns or marketing campaigns just to have uh, a different and a redefined image of our brand in the market. 
So before further ado, without further ado, I would like to start with uh, brand as a definition. So uh, whenever we say uh, that, okay, Starbucks is a brand, uh, Jaguar is a brand, Tata is a brand, what we actually mean by it? It is, uh, it has both uh, tangible and intangible aspects to it. So we have the name of the brand, of course, like Puma will have a different uh, image in your mind than action shoes might have. Then there's this term, uh, sign, design, symbol. So this image of Starbucks coffee uh, cup in front of you, the moment you see this, you immediately know, okay, this is Starbucks. And then this is very iconic because it comes from 1960s, 70s and 80s from the US. So that they have a history of their own so this is what makes the brand itself that either it's a name or a sign or a term or a symbol and then you are immediately are able to associate yourself with the fact that okay this is something we are aware about now i would say uh, i would need to ask you all why branding is important um it is important because you know okay you 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 must be someone there must be someone who is uh, making chocolates at home during lockdown let's say a lot of people have uh, become entrepreneurs in their own meaning and uh, they have started small businesses from home because of course given the fact that they had a lot of time on their hands uh, given the fact that we were facing unemployment issues and uh, Taking the wisdom of Mr. Desai, I would say uh, this is the best time to start your own business because there's never a better time. Uh, branding is important because it helps your customers to give to, to gain confidence uh, about your product uh, for security. Uh, they are able to connect with that brand uh, given again, depending on how you project your brand image in the market and then uh, Whenever a customer purchases your brand, they feel satisfied because they have a certain amount of credibility associated with it. So I have this image of dairy milk chocolate here. I'd like to tell you a short story. So uh, dairy milk, when uh, came into India, they started with this Cadbury thing. And then, you know, uh, they, their parent company is Mondellas, I think, something like that. They have their name. Uh, the parent company goes by the name Mondellas. And then when uh, Cadbury changed their packing and then, you know, uh, this brand name from Cadbury to Mondell, as a lot of people were felt like a lot of people felt like their uh, faith in the brand is threatened because they were aware of Cadbury. They were aware of the taste and the quality and the kinds of chocolate they sell. But then they were not really aware of who Mondellas was. Like a lot of times people don't know that Google search engine is owned by Alphabet. So... But then Google is so prominent that a lot of people don't even care to know uh, what their parent company is. So that way is once you have your brand, people will be able to uh, have a certain sense of confidence. They will feel more secure when doing transactions with your brand. Uh, they'll be able to connect themselves and that will satisfy them. That is why branding is important. Now again, we all know how Patanjali started. I think it's very well in front of everyone. Everyone from our generation, I think, from 2000s kids, they would know this. So uh, whenever we say that we have to start a product or we have to start a company that should have a certain brand image, we should be aiming at that brand image should be unique. It should be positive. It should be strong because if we are able to have those adjectives uh, attached to our brand, we'll be able to have more impactful uh, image of our brand. Like Patanjali has a strong association with Baba Ramdev and we all know Baba Ramdev has been enjoying a massive confidence in um, confidence by the people of India. So be it yoga, Ayurveda, uh, health, nutrition, he has been there all through and through. And uh, that is why his association with Patanjali made it such a large company, which is valued over 5000 crores today. I think a lot more than that. So uh, how did this happen? Because they already have the, had the brand image, which was Baba Ram Dev, and then they, their association made it uh, amazing. Uh, at the same time, uh, when we're talking about brand awareness, brand awareness depends on two aspects. One is how easily your brand can be uh, 
heard of or can be seen and then the breadth is how often your brand can be recalled so basically the recall value of your brand will is, is directly proportional to having a high brand equity so this is uh, uh, these are the two very important aspects of brand image and brand awareness uh, whenever we study marketing be it your business studies commerce classes or you know whenever you study the very basics it's always about the four p's in fact now these four p's have come on to come on to become a seven p's so four p's product price place promotion promotion uh, what your product is how different it is what are the features what are the functions uh, then your price tells about what sort of segment and what sort of audience you are targeting so if your price is really high your product will be taken as an exclusive and a premium product but when uh, uh, you have a low price you're trying to reach a mass audience at the same time uh, when we talk about the place it's it's about uh, how uh, where how are you uh, setting up the distribution channels uh, what what kind of people are uh, providing the services and they are attending the potential and existing customers and then is the promotion which is uh, uh, how are you promoting how are you spreading awareness uh, be it through social media now or be it through billboards then so like that so whenever you're creating a brand these four aspects seem very simple but they at the same time they are very very critical so we have to make sure that we are very clearly defining these aspects because these aspects then help in uh, segmenting targeting and positioning your product in the market uh, which of course has to be preceded by market surveys market research uh, let's talk about Puma here so when we talk about brand equity I think they, they, there used to be this newspaper that used to come as a subsidiary newspaper with Economic Times back when I was in school 2009-2008 uh, I remember 10-11 in fact so uh, there used to be this brand equity uh, paper that used to come with economic times and it used to tell all about brands and then you know stories i used to find that really fascinating so that paper the name of that uh, paper was brand equity now i didn't know that time what brand equity actually means but thankfully today i do so i would say that when brand value uh, is seen in its macro sense it makes your brand equity so if i say uh, if I say that uh, I'm going to buy a, sh a sport shoe for, let's say if I have to, uh, for traveling or for playing. So I would say Nike is the one that comes to my mind in the first instant. Now, why is that? Because Nike has maintained its brand value in such a way that uh, it is an ultimate reflection of the quality they offer, the service they offer and the durability their products. So when we talk about brand equity, we talk about the perceived quality how customers think about their quality when they are talk when they listen about their brand or when they uh, come across your brand next is the brand loyalty where uh, where you know if i'm purchasing nike shoes once i'm coming back to it i'm doing repeated purchases so be it merchandise be it footwear i'm going back to nike because i like the durability and the quality of their products so that helps in building brand loyalty brand association so when you talk about brand association it, it is more of a marketing uh, angle uh, when uh, nike runs marketing campaigns you see billboards you see uh, influential figures associated with it so be it deepika padukone in the marketing campaign of nike or other women athletes uh, which were in the recent nike campaign which talks about you can be a woman and you can be an athlete at the same time so that's the association and the awareness brand awareness and association so basically nike is spreading the fact that we are a brand that celebrates uh you know uh, rigor we celebrate going beyond boundaries and all of those good things and then uh we have brand association which is one more one more thing that i'd like to mention here uh that uh let's say when nike is uh promoting their uh, brand they are using certain uh, terms and phrases that help in you know associating it with the public with the people and then they are motivated and believe that okay that's a really nice brand that things like that because they they are able to change the mindsets 
along with that the last element that we have is the brand proprietary assets for example when we talked about patanjali right away uh baba ramdev can be considered as a proprietary asset and you know patanjali was very smart uh, that they uh, collaborated with baba ramdev because baba ramdev already enjoys so much confidence among middle class and uh, you know throughout the households of india he's a household name so that way is i think these all factors help in building brand equity now i'd like to take uh, this uh, presentation towards a little interesting uh, point where i would like to discuss with you how amazon was able to build the brand equity and the brand value that they enjoy today uh, compared to when they came in so uh, when amazon came into india flipkart and snap deal and other competitors they were already doing well but uh, they were so strategic and they were so smart in their approaches that uh, they were able to uh, leverage the mass population that india has because you know even i believe that the best place to do business in today's world is india given the uh, such a massive population of 1.35 billion people that we enjoy and uh, the business exposure that one can get so uh, when amazon came into india they spent a lot of money they spent a millions of dollars in creating strong brand awareness and then at the same time uh, they also made sure that you know they are giving quality products so they very well used to mention that amazon sells 100% original products so when they are saying 100% original products they are assuring the customers that if they purchase their products from um, from the website they will get the original products and then uh, they were also able to develop this cultural identity where uh, you know they they uh, used terms like apni dukan uh, and then there were these ads running on tv commercials where uh, a daughter's father runs a sari business and then during the lockdown uh, the daughter was able to help his dad set up an online uh, sari store on amazon and hence apni dukan so they used terms like this to you know resonate with the indian people indian terminologies and that is the part of cultural branding which we'll talk very soon and along with that uh, amazon very much focused on the customer service because uh, you know uh, focusing on the customer make, giving them a good experience giving them a specific experience uh, and talking about specific experience i think one more thing that we can actually talk about is the proprietary assets which is the uh, one click purchases like uh, i think it was more prevalent in the us and amazon still holds the patent for it that uh, in one click you will be taken out to a checkout page and then you don't need to add your address and phone number each time you do it because it's already saved so they were the inventors of one click purchase uh, but then uh, talk about amazon prime is one thing that helps in uh, providing better Uh, product and service quality and loyalty in developing a loyalty as well because uh, this amazon prime gives the customer a special feeling like you know they were very much focused on that uh, if we give them a special treatment people will come back to us so a uh, pay monthly payment of i think 129 rupees or something like that i don't i'm not really sure about the amount i think it's somewhere 129 130 where a customer enjoys the prime membership and they have faster deliveries then they have access to the content as well online on ott platforms so i think that way they were really smart enough to tap into the opportunity and uh, making sure people come back them for repeated purchases now uh, we have understood uh, what brand equity is all that literature all those case studies but excuse me it is very important on if for understanding how one measures the brand value so one measures the brand value by you know it's more of a monetary aspect to it so let's say if i'm running a, a website and uh, i have been 2 years in the business and uh, i already know through a survey and market research i already know that how people perceive my uh, business or my products so magazines like forbes or other business magazines they come out with the articles that you know about the valuation and things like that so how one measures brand value it is the monetary worth of your business or a brand if it was to be sold out what would be the value of that in the market and also 
how it is measured it is also measured by how other uh, people investors companies uh, perceive our value so uh, if let's say i own uh, a product which, which i sell through my website uh, then uh, other companies would be able to understand okay this how valuable this business is and then they would say okay if we were to purchase it this would be the amount that i would pay for so that is what the brand value is uh, how much the companies would be ready to pay for the rights to own your brand um, again there is not fixed formula for it it all depends on what your net assets are net assets being assets minus liabilities along with how strong your balance sheet holds uh, the value of number the how strong the numbers are in your balance sheet uh, preceded by strong profit and loss and trading account and all of those things financial statements um when we talk about building a brand value i think it a lot of it is perception driven a lot of it is brand associations and a lot of it is the experience that customers receive or they feel when they buy your product so hence these are the three points right in front of you brand value can be built more stronger when we are more when we are advertising when we are using a uh, great marketing campaigns advertising it to the core uh, being more creative having uh, famous personalities associated with our marketing campaigns and all of that then we have ambassadorship and sponsorship which is again a subset of marketing again and then is the customer experience that if i felt great i would obviously go back to that uh, business to buy the product again so that helps in building a brand value and measuring the brand value now uh, this presentation is about why nurturing a brand is important uh, and how it can be nurtured we did talk about the brand value and that will help eventually in nurturing the brand uh, why brand nurturing is important because uh, given the competition because of the fact that markets have become global now so my competition does not really belong only in india it belongs to the whole world so uh, amazon being the american company is now operating in almost all the economies and same for apple for that matter so my competition is come my competitors are from all over the world so i have to make sure that my brand stands out so that i end up achieving more sales more business more profits and more expansion so that is why nurturing a brand is important so if my brand is nurtured if I, and if my brand is well aware and it is well known to people i'll have the following benefits and that is why it is important firstly I, my if my brand is well known to the people among the people uh, i'll have a competitive advantage whenever i'm coming out with a new product so let's say uh, apple has come out with so many phones till now i remember in 2009 or 10 um 3g 3 iphone 3 and 4 were in vogue and now we are on 11 pro and other versions of iphone 11 so they have come a long way why did they enjoy such strong sales each time because they had a competitive advantage and that's where uh, th their brand value helped in establishing a comp competitive edge it helped them for easy product introduction so be it ipods be it uh, iphones be it ipads be it macbooks every time they rock the charts because they already have that brand value in the among the people then there's customer loyalty because apple gives such a strong and a durable quality of service uh, their customers are loyal each time the phone turns uh, that each time they launch a product as an iphone people are crazy they queue outside their stores and they want the new product and then they sell out their old phone or give it to someone else uh, their family members and things like that also when a brand is nurtured well it helps in giving enhance it helps uh, in developing enhanced credibility so when uh, uh, when a product already has been uh, when you know when a product is already enjoying such a belief and uh, such uh, acceptance products are more credible and people would love to own each part of that uh, successful iconic brand that apple is so that applies to the same way other big brands as well who have been doing amazingly well in all uh, product categories that they have coming back to digital marketing which is again a very important part of today's marketing uh, vogue i would say because spending 10 times more money on a billboard 
does not ensure reach that uh, you know one tenth of the money spent on billboard might end up giving you so social media can be leveraged very well we all use social media but then understanding the business side of it insights analytics i think these are the technical points which can help in uh, achieving success through social media by building a brand on social media you can target your audience better you can uh, you can share your brand story what was the evolution how you came up with the idea what your brand represents what is your philosophy what is the philosophy of your brand then all platforms can be used on social media for example twitter can be used for single liner punch lines or tag lines or copywriting and then at the same time facebook instagram can be used with a more creative content pinterest on the other hand can be used for more pictorial content at the same time because there the pictures do much better then at the same time uh, our content should be persuasive we should have a strong content strategy there should be you know be it through caption or be it through videos or graphics art is the best form of expression so uh, having your communication and engagement strategy uh, in place it helps really a lot uh, i have worked with a lot of clients and a lot of them when i look at their social media profiles and they don't even think about or consider consider it i think that is where they lose a lot of business on the table i think content strategy and communication and engagement strategy is the best thing that any business can leverage and more so in the case of medium and small businesses which mr desai caters to uh, it's very important to have strong uh, presence on online media digital platforms since day one because uh, it will help in building organic audience uh, pretty early pretty soon and then in 6 months you will be doing very well than your other counterparts i would say before that uh, before you know uh, getting into all this we should also understand the cost and benefits what costs you incur be it direct or indirect even if you're outsourcing even if it's cost in terms of uh, you know uh, let's say employees or uh, you know or, or digital assets or whatever it is uh, your cost and benefits should be balanced in such a way that you end up earning more revenue because the existence of business lies in keeping the customer and when we are having more profits uh, it's 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 going in the right direction and the intention should always be on having the minimum cost now uh, before uh, you know without uh, keeping this presentation too long i would say rational emotional and cultural branding are the three important aspects which should be focused now i'll give one line for each to give a better meaning Uh, rational branding is more like i'm talking about the features and talking about the functionality of the product so for example and that is why i have maggie's example here to give a more uh, relatable uh, perspective so uh, maggie says that it's fast to cook and good to eat so that's a rational branding that is the unique feature of maggie and you know even if you say uh, noodles to anyone these days they think of maggie first and noodles later such a strong impact this brand has had uh, over the generations and beyond uh, you know it, it's beyond thoughts it, it's so much an important part of our lives maggie um, then we talk about emotional branding now you know a lot of times rational branding is not enough so we have to include the emotional aspect of it how that brand can be associated with the emotions so we must have seen the ads where uh, mothers are making sure that you know uh, that like every mom has their own recipe of maggie how they cook it so that is what the uh, this their marketing campaign focused on moms and maggie it was a hashtag rather so uh, uh, having a feeling that uh, you know moms taking care of their kids taking care of the family working moms making sure that you know their kids are fed with maggie because maggie takes really less time to be cooked so these are the emotional parts of uh, branding now every time rational and emotional branding might not work in your favor then to uh, and then even if they work in your favor with the time comp- competition increases and it shoots up so each time we have to come up with a cultural branding aspect where we try to resonate the brand with cultural identities so be it you know uh, resonating it with the revolutionaries or intellectuals or public figures something like that or or which has been an important part of the history of the country 
reason why I say this is Bajaj Vikrant because uh, it was I think a few years ago when Bajaj came out with this line of bikes and then uh, Ines Vikrant was the uh, first submarine uh, which was used uh, by the government of India, D Ministry of Defense. So uh, that way is owning a part of INS Vikrant will give the uh, nationalist or nationalism uh, feeling of the people a boost up. So that is why when pe when Bajaj came up with this sort of an ad, their bikes sold out like anything because they were able to build a connection. It's a culture because you know, it's a part of a culture then. Uh, INS Vikrant holds a very special place in the trajectory of India's growth. Uh, or India's evolution as a defense power. So in that case, in that way, uh, Bajaj was very successful in building that resonance. Now, uh, before we end this uh, webinar, uh, I would like to give you guys some free tools and then we, I would like to take up some questions if you guys would like to ask anything with respect to your specific business or, uh, you know, maybe if I can share my opinion on something. These are the tools which I think every middle, medium, uh, micro, small and medium uh, enterprise should use. Uh, I'm assuming that, I mean, of course, you guys are running a business, so you have either a product or a service to offer. So th these are certain ways. Uh, these are especially the marketing tools, I would say, which can give you a better edge and advantage to grow faster and to track growth so that you can formulate strategies. Of course, without data, strategies don't hold relevance. You should, guys should have this CRM uh, tool in place, which will help in tracking leads, uh, you know, converting leads and then follow ups as well. Follow up is really, really important. I think follow up is the basic task of everything I've done so far, be it jobs, be it business, be it clients, be it anything. Follow up is the key. The more you follow up, the more uh, uh, the better bond you will develop with the be it the HR if you're looking for a job be it the uh, uh, potential customer you're trying to sell to because you know when conversations happen uh, good good uh, bonds develop so that's how it helps and then uh, social media management tools buffer and Hootsuite they, they help us actually a lot uh, you can actually schedule your social media uh, posts well in advance you can plan up to for a month and then relax and focus on your business while your content is being posted regularly on social media platforms many chat is one such tool where you know messenger driven marketing can be done and they have really high conversion rates i think more than 50 percent so they do very well when combined with facebook and google ads google search console is again a very uh, great tool which can be used for uh, having a better performance in the websites and then uh, also for targeting the audience for a specific ad campaign uh, discover org is a sort of a crm tool as well but then they have more features with respect to uh, lead database and uh, you know finding your c level database and all of those things google ads and facebook ads is a no-brainer because if you are starting a business and you don't tell people that you've started a business it doesn't really help you because you won't end up selling so it's always good to uh, have those promotions and then you know you can always play with geographical locations your digital assets digital assets being the uh, the uh, graphic or the presentation or the video that you are promoting through the ad uh, that helps in uh, you know giving people a clear idea of what you're selling and you know as a suggestion i would say keep your uh, pitching clear uh, people should know what your product is not that if you have an idea and you're promoting just because it's creative it doesn't ensure sales so you have to make sure that you have to make sure that uh, you know you are uh, you are actually telling very clearly communication should be clear what your product is and how they can buy it in you can use this in video tool it's called invideo.com if i'm not wrong this this is used for video creation they have a lot of templates uh, and it's quite affordable as well compared to other video creation and ed editing tools you should try this one for sure and one last one is canva i would say a lot of businesses in the beginning uh, don't have much financial resources to outsource their designing work uh, canva actually helps and comes very handy be it videos presentations uh, be it media kits reports videos anything anything canva is your go-to you can save a lot of your money in the initial days of your business which is actually you know the struggling phase of any business 
uh, these are the tools plus if you guys want more tools with, with specific to any other query please do let me know I can would more than love to shoot the email to Manjula or Mr. Desai's team uh, I'll be more than happy to help you in every way uh, that's all from my end uh, keep reading more I think ideas is the currency of today uh, if you are creative if you are well aware if you like reading about businesses read read more case studies get to know how businesses developed because a lot of times we are not informed that will actually help you in setting up a larger business but then uh, before i finish i would like to say one thing that uh, when you're starting a business uh, it nothing ensures success and uh, the thing is that the bravery and the courage actually lies in execution so if you're executing as long as you're executing you are good to go don't think or feel you know th don't think or feel bad about the failure because it's a part and parcel uh, you were smart enough and you were courageous enough to start your own thing so just go with it uh, you will find your way and be patient that's all thank you thank you mr desai for this opportunity uh, i would love to take up some questions if anyone have please thank you guru preet a very interesting thing and uh, uh, i think all of my audience who are there from msme will uh, take up some tips for increasing their brand value which will help them to uh, create a intangible assets uh, and uh, a, a source of uh, revenue for their uh, market their business customers acquisition also will become faster so thank right. you guru preet i request everybody whosoever has got a question can put in the yes. chat box so that uh, Guru Preet will be able to answer and uh, this thing. I think you have got first question coming from yes. Darla Keshav Brahma Naidu. Dar yes. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just read it. Uh, coronal and honey products of Patanjali are under cloud. The IMA challenged the efficacy of coronal. The honey is proved to be not genuine. I already felt that it was not genuine, yes, to some extent. Please explain the sacredness of the brand image. Yes, of course. You know, uh, Darla, thank you for the question. Uh, yes, and I think not even now, even when Patanjali came out with their products earlier, even when they were not under scrutiny, people still were some, I mean, those who were smart consumers or those who were already, you know, aware of the fact that, okay, they understand the quality of the products. Uh, they were quite aware and I personally was not using their honey product as well. So yes, uh, this would definitely uh, hamper the brand image. And I think in that, that way, all of the elements that we explained about in the brand equity uh, presentation, I think they all will be affected to some extent. Reason being because uh, when their brand image is uh, affected, given this uh, sort of, an, uh, you know, uh, I would say this is sort of uh, disloyalty to the customers that they have done. Um, so in that case, uh, even Baba Ramdev's credibility is bound to fall because uh, when proprietary assets and brand association is uh, getting affected or threatened, uh, that way the whole setup comes to doom. So I think in that way, uh, brand image is obviously affected. So that is why we said that perceived quality, the very first point of brand equity perceived quality is so important that if you are not able to instill in people a trust that your brand holds a certain quality of uh, product then that ways they would have had a long way to go uh, so yes i think that's what i feel darla uh, please tell me if i was able to answer your question all right uh, while she types uh, while darla types i'll I'm taking this next question by Rajesh. Rajesh is asking me how to use HubSpot. So uh, Rajesh, uh, CRM tools, uh, they usually charge a monthly fee. But then I said HubSpot personally because I used to use HubSpot when I didn't want to pay them <laughs> for the service. So uh, HubSpot is free. Uh, you can use the free version and they have a lot of features to use in the free version. Um, so as soon as you uh, sign up and you install it, uh, you will see that uh, their, uh, their bot setup or I think through the AI thing, they give you the whole survey of how to use HubSpot. So they will tell you how contacts can be added, 
how you can uh, you know change the status of a lead how you can send the email how can you update it so and and very attention to detail information there is on upspot so when you sign up uh, they have i think they have this series of two three youtube videos also which will help you in giving uh, you know in providing an understanding of how hubspot can be used for uh, tracking leads and converting into customers and also their dashboard is very interesting they have also help you in regular follow ups so they will remind you so that way is uh, things will be right in front of you and you will not forget that you were supposed to follow up on someone or the other so yes you you but i would recommend uh, start with a free tool use it for a month and then go for further a uh, paid version if you think that is required otherwise i think uh, given the marketing uh, like the digital marketing agency that i work with we use the free tool because i feel that that's enough for us so i have another question from imran what is the timeline for launching a new brand is there a business reason or a major event driving this timeline i think timeline for the brand depends on what is the status of your product or service that you're trying to move into the market so let's say if your product is a service so let's say if you are giving what can be service okay so let, let's say imran you are uh, trying to start a tuition website where you uh, bring along tutors online and then they sign up and then students they uh, connect with the tutors and then tutors get paid hourly basis and then you have your certain commission this is a business model i'm just using it for an example now the timeline for launching the brand will depend on a few things first uh, do you have the website ready because uh, i cannot launch my brand name and logo and you know start social media ads when i don't have my website in place secondly i should have the uh, i should have uh, the target customers so in this case tutors and students both so i should know i should have the marketing strategy laid out already because timeline for launching a new brand depends on your strategy that strategy should be marketing strategy it should be customer acquisition strategy and then there needs to be an evaluation of how well that strategy is projected to perform uh and then after that evaluation uh we can execute and then uh coming to your second part of the question is there a business reason or a major event driving that uh, the timeline i think a uh, major thing is your business website itself because let's say uh, or or i i can go with the other example also where you have a physical shop and an online website so in that case uh, uh you should know uh that you know if so let's say if you were doing if you were selling a product you should have your product ready so those four p's of um, marketing mix as we call it price place promotion and product those four p's should be in place where you, you should be very thorough and clear with how your product packaging should look like what is the pricing what is the distribution cost what is the promotion cost what is the uh, uh you know uh, other direct and indirect costs involved and along with that uh, then there should be a timeline that you can launch your website or a product uh, because uh, any business or any product or service that you're trying to sell uh, if the, if it doesn't have a website then i think half of the business will not come to the table because given the digital times we are in today website is very very crucial so uh, so yes i think i will yes, like sir, to yes, add to imran's point see on last 24th march 2020 corona lockdown has come and people who have come out with the sanitizers they could get grab uh -huh. the larger mark, market like that some event uh, will uh, change the business perspective according to this dynamics of the market because all over world uh, the corona was a new effect so like that many things can come out which is connected with the particular event suppose now ipl sort of thing comes up there also the, the special kind of brands promotion will come depends on the target audience and thing like that okay thank you imran right right so i have question from manjula uh, she's asking uh is it necessary to outline the key qualities and benefits my brand offers uh yes okay so i'll take this in three steps 
first of all uh, that's a part of rational branding because uh, because uh, what your brand offers is your USP it's a unique selling proposition so if I'm highlighting the features and functions of your product that is the first stage where your product will be accepted because be, because it it uh, it addresses a certain need when it comes to uh, the second aspect where you know only focusing on the qualities and benefits that your brand provides uh, will not help you help your brand evolve in the long term so for that we'll be focusing on emotional branding as we talked for maggie like uh, after uh, when maggie came out when they said that it's ready to cook and good to eat fast to cook and good to eat uh, at the same time, you must have seen a lot of other brands coming up, like there was Yippie, there were uh, Top Ramen and other brands also. Uh, even if they were international brands, but they came into India way later than Maggie was launched. So uh, what I would say is uh, these qualities and benefits, they form part of the functional branding or oh, uh, rational branding. Uh, to evolve your brand further and to make it even big and you know to, to earn a brand value, we have to focus on emotional branding and then uh, after you know that stage of branding will also fade out with the more competition because other brands will also focus on the emotional aspects social aspects of advertising so in that way the third aspect comes into picture which is cultural branding so then you can have uh, let's say that uh, uh, like you must have seen the ads where uh, you know uh, there are soldiers on the border and then they were they are hungry and then they are cooking Maggie. So how Maggie is a part of their story. So 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 that way is what I'm trying to say is we cannot always you know use the qualities and benefits that your brand provides uh, for uh, making it bigger with time because there are phases of brand growth and for to compete with those phases and you know to evolve our to to evolve uh, and come out as a winning brand we have to change our strategy with time and if we are able to uh, keep it in touch with the new trends and new ideas I think that raise brand of promises more growth in that way I, I hope I was able to answer your question Guru Preet has given a very good uh, timeline you see as uh, brand building is taking longer time can you connect McDonald with uh, anything else or can you uh, um, take an example of Lux can you compare it with the a uh, food item lux as uh, when it is said you will immediately collect the soap like that you know as uh, rightly said by guru Preet, it takes longer time as the process evolves slowly slowly the brand connects with quality and other things in the mind of consumer this is only for uh, consumer brands in industrial brand also like siemens or hitachi or uh, mm -hmm. they, they try to create that kind of uh, understanding so that the general people also get aware. Am I right, Guru Bhri? Right. right, sir. And, and sir, when you said those those brands, I would like to share here, Samsung also came up with the campaign where uh, their customer service personnel, he drives all up to the mountains just to fix the TV where, uh, you know, the, there is this orphanage, I guess, where to physically handicapped and physically challenged kids live and then one of their uh, one of the girl from that orphanage is actually performing on tv and that's why connecting to the tv was so important for them so that way samsung was able to get into the you know minds that they care about you like that maruti service station also is one of that example in the mountains maruti service station right 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 yeah. right, right, right right absolutely can we go for next question huh Yes, sir. So Neerati is asking me, how do I successfully spin off a company without losing market share or profit? So uh, how do I successfully spin off a company without losing market share or profit? By spin off, do you mean that uh, you are changing the category of services or uh, you're trying to uh, change your product range? Can I, can I suggest, can I say that what Amulya is asking probably, like, you mm -hmm. know, Tata, uh, Tata Oil Company was having a brand known as Hamam. And okay. it was taken over by uh, uh, Hindustan Unilever. 
and then they kill the brand over a span of time hammam brand is not available now and they try right. to promote life boy as a separate this thing they nature mm-hmm. because they, they were in a same market segment so there were a two different purpose for hindustan unilever to take over uh, the hammam brand they have taken right. over am i right um, amulya or you got any further question uh, i'd like to know if we were able to address it see even if you remember dalda dalda was a uh, brand associated with vanaspati ghee so many yeah. brands have come after dalda but still people of my age or pro- probably your age also dalda even it comes you will connect it with vanaspati ghee so oh, uh, there were i think if i am not wrong one or two uh, owners change also in dalda right okay uh, am i uh, have right. i answered your question amulya okay let us go to next okay yes so shravan has a question how do i fix enrich or improve my company culture well uh, company culture depends a lot on how much time your team spends with each other i think i had a meeting this morning and we were talking just about the same thing you should know that uh, uh, what are the strengths what are the weaknesses and what are the aspirations of your team if you know that well so there will be a few benefits you'll be able to delegate well you'll you'll be able to instill your trust in them for a certain task or for a, for a certain objective that you are expecting them to achieve and then um, so okay so let me help shravan here so fixing the company culture i think for this there should be more engagement among your teammates and then uh, you know uh, you can also make sure that how they work day in day out so that uh, you know the current uh, productivity can be gauged and then once we know the current productivity it can then be enriched and improved now how we can enrich and improve you can uh, see how they performed in last 6 months and then you can if you think they are doing well then it's all good in the hood but then if you think that uh, uh, no there is some problem that is not how i want them to work so then you are supposed to spend more time with them maybe uh, you can have a lunch together sometime or you know may you may be have some uh, some uh, a short trip like a lot of companies do that now traveling is a very impart- is important point of you know uh, knowing each other because uh, that way your client will feel special that you know okay he's having a good time because his company arranged a trip for him or a beat a dinner or a lunch something but what i'm trying to say here is if you involve your team in and in some sort of informal activities and engagements they will be able to express themselves more and when there is expression i think they will be able to communicate their problems and uh, uh, shortcomings to you and that way you will you will be able to know how you can fix them a lot of times you know uh, uh, these star- startups don't really focus on uh, how their team feels but it is very important on how their team feels only because you know uh, if they are feeling great the output will be great so that's what i feel see according to me sravan we have one session on uh, vision mission and value which is critical to develop a uh, culture so but generally what happens when msme vision mission and uh, values are created after some stability so at that time the owner or the entrepreneur or the top management team will be in dilemma uh, and uh, uh, if they start insisting from uh, imbibing that culture there will be some fallouts also some people will leave but uh, values are defined very well for creating a culture and when the new people join in that culture imbibes and culture is like a brand takes many many uh, much longer time and it helps you to create a intangible assets i hope we have answered your question uh, sravan now in the uh, we will take another two, one or two questions only all Policy. right so we have one from the user's name is policy mart okay so the question is is there any difference between building brands for a physical good and that of a services especially 
when one belongs purely to a services industry well uh, i think fundamentals are same to some extent so let's say if i was to uh, build a brand so i'm assuming it's for it, it, it applies to both goods and services so if i was to uh, launch a brand or start a business i think uh, i would firstly so this will be my hierarchy as per my understanding um i would involve uh, i would involve myself heavily in market research to know if for the product or the service that i'm trying to sell out does it have demand if there is what is the competitor i'll have my competitors framework where i'll have the strengths and weaknesses of the other of the existing uh, uh, you know uh, com companies right now and then what so there would be some weaknesses that i can leverage there would be strengths which i will be mild in the beginning but then if i'm able to leverage the weakness i'll have more space and more space and acceptance in the market um now after that sort of market research i would then uh, focus on my product or service what is the uh, channel of availability accessibility and affordability for that product or service um and then i would focus on the platform where i'm selling that product or service uh now that platform has to be focused on considering the uh, so i call it stp basically it's segmentation targeting and positioning so if i am able to segment the market and target the audience and then how uh, i am positioning the product like so i'm actually trying to work on how my brand should be perceived so that is how uh, the positioning will be done and once that is done then is the launching phase which uh, of course starts from strategic frameworks first of all where we'll be focusing on the marketing side uh, strategy and then again because we have digital platforms uh, performance can be you know tracked quite quickly as opposed to the old times when it was just the billboards so i think uh, yes uh, fundamentals are the same uh, i would say for physical and goods and services but then again uh, uh, for example if let's say i if i have a product that needs to be delivered so that means i'll have logistics cost i have storage costs i have packaging costs while in the service uh, i won't incur those kind of costs and when there are no such kind of costs people spend money more on improving the platform that they sell on or they uh, spend that money on more on the campaigns just to have more brand awareness so i think fundamentals are same to some extent but yes uh, there are costs involved and then costs vary again to the which sort of product you are selling physically so so yeah according to me service industry you can take an example of telecom services where you are not filling but you remember ke jio brand or uh, airtel or a vodafone you know about 15 18 years back there were about 18 players or so in telecom sector so the brand mm, the service quality everything has changed and consolidation has happened so service industry also branding can be done and it has to be done as of small small services like you know what is that uber or ola and uh, see local local market also mm -hmm. similar car services has come so right. these are all kind of services where brand building plays a critical role and it's a, it has linked with service delivery also hope answered right. your question uh, mr uh, uh, policy mart can we have one more question the time is so getting up Hmm. yeah so we have another question from imran how to make people talk about my brand are there any techniques or methods well uh, okay so i don't know i always come back to fundamentals so i think when you want your brand to be talked more among the people you should be very uh, creative and uh, or maybe i should put it this way that a lot of uh, thoughts should be put on how you are telling out your brand story to the people now with social media and with google ads and facebook ads i think this process has uh, 
become a good catalyst you know these facebook and google ads have become great catalyst for uh, making your story reach different people even on linkedin also so uh, i think uh, to make more people talk about your brand uh, more thoughts should be put in on how we can change uh, the way your brand can be represented now uh, there can be a certain story there can be a certain incident there can be some social messages there can be some you know uh, burning cause that you can associate your brand with and then that can help in making it go viral or if not viral so to say just to have a strong brand awareness now coming back to your uh, second part uh, which is which talks about the techniques or methods i think uh, copywriting is one that helps a lot along with that you can use visual uh, communication methods so for example you can have your uh, brand kit which should reflect of what your brand philosophy is then you can use your graphics videos uh, you can have ad campaigns uh, you can have uh, stories reels igtv i think there are so many uh, elements to each social media platform that uh, you know your the story can be spread to a lot of people now to give you a clear uh, you know course of action i think i would say you can start with having a name of your brand then have some ideas that you want you know people to think about whenever they come across your brand or whenever they hear your brand so those four five ideas will give you the core picture now from those four five ideas you can create outshoots which uh, by uh, outshoots as in uh, each idea can be uh, reflected as a in the form of a story so let's say if your uh, product talks about uh, comfort then you can have some story where uh, where a person comes back from the work and when he uses your product he feels so relaxed so different ideas related to your brand considering the way you want the people to perceive your brand those ideas can then be extrapolated in the form of stories for each idea and then there should be a certain brand story that you know people can be able to relate to so that ways videos can help and then again you don't need to spend so much money if you have any financial constraints but if you don't you can obviously spend you know on creating that video or an idea having a short podcast or some or maybe you can also run a youtube ad or youtube ad in the form of a video short video which tells people about what problem you are solving yes and before i finish uh, sir i'll take one moment uh, so uh, when you want your people more people to talk about your brand i think it's very important that you make sure that you solve a problem that is so very basic netflix came out because it solved the problem of renting dvds amazon came out because they solved the problem for shopping sitting on your comfort of your home um then um uh, what else uh so many uh, other applications and businesses the airbnb came out because they wanted to solve the problem and wanted to give people uh, a comfort of their home and access to the kitchen and everything even when they are traveling so that way is i think solving a problem is very very key to any business uh, that is why i take too many thoughts whenever i think of starting some or the other idea because unless i'm not solving a problem i'm not really making it worth it for the people so you have to make sure you solve a problem yes yeah so uh, uh, guru preet thank you very much thank you my audience and next saturday again on 6 march we will have a very uh, uh, very good speaker who will be speaking about insurance needs because insurance in our msme sector the penetration is uh, re uh, re reasonably light see uh, accident fire uh, um, flooding Uh, key men uh, policies all that uh, are happening and more particularly after corona a lot of uh, uh, benefits uh, has to be understood so next saturday we'll have a, a topic on insurance connected with msme and there is a prominent speaker on that subject which will announce it on um, tuesday so with your this thing bye bye thank you mr guru please thank, thank you everyone thank you sir thank have you. a have a nice evening everyone thank, thank you. you thank you